This is lesson 6.5, graphing square root functions. We're going to start out by looking at the parent function for the square root equation. So this is the parent function for square root functions. And so we're going to graph this a little bit. Um, the graph starts at 0, 0, and it goes through 1, 1. And it's going to go down here through 4, 2. And it's going to look like this. It's basically half of a parabola. It goes up and it goes to the right. Okay. So this is the parent function. We're going to do some transformations where we will shift this left and right and up and down. And we will stretch it or shrink it. But this is what the basic one looks like. And the important points, I think, are to remember that it goes through the origin and it goes through 1, 1. Because when our slope changes, then that's what's going to change for us. Notice that when we take the square root of any number, it has to be greater than zero. We cannot take the square root of a negative number on a real number line, which is what we're dealing with here with our xy axis. So we don't have imaginary numbers here. We only have the square roots of positive numbers. So all of my domain has to be greater than or equal to zero. Now if this graph shifted and say started over here, it went that way, then my, my domain would shift also. But for the parent function, it's just zero. Notice also this is only in the first quadrant over here where all the y values are also positive, so my y is also greater than or equal to zero. So these are the, um, the most important points of the parent function. All right, so if we take that parent function and we put a one-half in front, that changes what I call the slope, and I put that in parentheses because it's not really called the slope, it's just the first the first little bit out of the box when you graph it. So it's still going to go through 0, 0, but now this has been, this is a shrink by one half. Remember when the, where the slope area is, is shrink or stretch. So if it's less than 1, it's a shrink. And so what this does is, instead of going through 1, 1, when we come over here to 1, we're only going to go up to a half. And so it's going to be shorter. So that's why it's a shrink. Um, the domain hasn't changed. X is still greater than or equal to 0. And the range hasn't changed. Y is still greater than or equal to 0. Notice that this starts at 0, 0. And it only goes up and to the right. It only goes up and to the right. So that's positive here and positive there. All right. If we have a negative, that's going to cause a reflection. And this number, since it's greater than 1, is going to be a stretch. This can be a stretch in the reflected direction. So when I draw my graph, I'm going to start at 0, 0. And then I'm going to go down, and the first point um, when we where the 1 is, is going to be at negative 3. So basically it goes down 3 over 1, so it's going to stretch, but it's a stretch in this direction because it's reflected. So now how does this affect my domain and range? Well, the domain still goes to the right only, and it starts at 0, so the domain is still x is greater than or equal to 0. But since we reflected this, now the y values are going down so now y is less than or equal to 0. All right, let's look at a different one. This one has the plus 2 after the square root. That means it's been shifted up to, that's a goofy u, up two places. So when I draw my graph, I'm going to keep that same shape, and it's going to even have the same slope, but it's going to start out being shifted up two places. So normally I would start at 0, 0, but we're not going to be at 0, 0 because we're going to shift up two places. So my new starting point is right here at 2, and it still goes up 1 over 1 to that initial spot, and so I'm going to curve it like that. The domain for this, still x only goes to the right, and it starts on the y-axis, so that's greater than or equal to 0. And then for the range, We've shifted it up a little bit, 
So the lowest range value here is 2. So the y value is greater than or equal to 2. All right, this time we have minus 3, but it's inside the square root. And anything that's inside the square root with x, remember, is opposite. So this is negative, which means it's shifted right instead of left. So this is going to be shifted right three places. So I'm going to draw my xy axis. I'm going to start at 0, 0, but then I have to shift it right. One, two, three places. That's going to be my new starting place. There is nothing different in the, it before the square root, so that's still a slope of 1. So up 1 over 1 gives me my initial starting value. So that's what my, my graph will look like. And so the domain for this one has been shifted right three places. So now x is greater than or equal to 3, whereas the y value is still just going up and so the y value is still greater than or equal to 0. Okay? All right, here's an example that has all of the parts put together. We have a shrink right here. It's been shifted right 3. It's been shifted down 1. So we're going to do all of those things to graph this. So I'm going to start at 0, 0. I always go right or left first, so I'm going to go right 1, 2, 3. That's going to be my new starting x value. And down 1, so down 1, that's the vertex. Well, I don't know if we call it a vertex, but it's the starting point. That starting point is at 3, negative 1. Then there's a shrink here, so my slope is going to be 1 half. So instead of going up 1 over 1, I'm going to go up a half and over 1. And so then I'm going to graph this. And it looks like that. All right, so for our domain and range, the domain has been shifted right three places, so x is greater than or equal to 3. The range has been shifted down one place, so y is greater than or equal to negative 1. And you can see it only goes up and to the right with a starting point at 3, negative 1. All right, here's the problem on your own. You're going to graph this problem and also tell me the domain and range. Make sure you bring this to me before you start your practice problems.